What's up, everybody? This is Angel's Impact, and this is our very first episode. I got my super fly guest, Miss Kyra Anderson, and I got super fly Justin the Trainer online. So anybody who's in Atlanta and in Houston, y'all could turn up for all of us, because today we're talking about how do we date? You know, one of the things that I've always done is I've been an observer of people. Professionally, the work that I do has to deal with working with people, whether it's with help in their social situation or their health situation. Um, but either way, I've been an observer of people for a long time. And so I do want to talk about dating, but we're not going to do a traditional dating conversation. We're going to talk about the shit that people really don't want to talk about. So our topic is, how do you date? Do you date with the traditional way of dating, like we were programmed to date? Do we have a list of criteria that is needed in order for someone to date you? Uh, they got to be six foot tall. They got to be brown skin. They got to be, they got to make this kind of money. They Or... Are you choosing your mates based on how they make you feel? Are you choosing folks from your heart chakra? Are you choosing folks with your heart? So how about it, folks? Uh. <laughs> how about it? Now, 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 I, as an observer, and as someone who is all right, let's take it back this far, right? When we want to talk about dating, let's talk about, let's take it to the beginning. So there was Adam, and then there was Lilith. He had a first wife. The first wife and him were totally equal in strength, in, in, in intellect, in everything. However, Lilith, and Adam didn't get along. They were always um, fighting. And everyone and both of them wanted to be in charge. So when it came down to having sex, Adam insisted that she get on the bottom. And she said, well, I'm equal to you. I need to get on top. You know, too. Like, I don't want to be in an inferior position. So as a result, he ended up raping her. Right? And she left. And she didn't want to come back. After that, let's see, Devon is back on. After that, she was replaced with Eve. And Eve was a subservient woman who served Adam's needs. And they lived happily ever after. So we got many historical, ancient, um, historical references to go by on data. One thing we know is that historically men have always had multiple wives. In our African tradition, in Indian tradition, Asian tradition, men have always had multiple wives. There are some African traditions where women have multiple husbands. I say big up to that girl. Them women, big them up. Big them up! Because... <laughs> But, you know, the men were allowed to sleep with concubines. That means they were fucking everybody. And it was allowed. It was allowed. It was a part of our culture in ancient African culture. This was a part. Even when you look in the Bible, your book, and you see Abraham, he had like six different concubines, two, three wives. I mean, this was something that and that was just done. This has been going on for thousands of years. But today, women are saying, no, you can't do that. It has to be me and only me. It has to be me and only me. So what y'all think about that? Uh, I mean, traditionally, women saying it should be me and only me, I get it. You know what I mean? And, uh, I, I'm a true believer that a man should be with one woman and a woman should be with one man. You know, that's that's what I believe in. And um, 
But going back to the original question, like I, I have standards, you know what I'm saying? And I think with dating, it's taken me so long to kind of grasp the concept because I never really got a clear understanding of it. And then on top of that, nobody has really, I'm not gonna say reached my standards or met my standards, but they have, it, it has been kind of close. It has been close. Nobody, no one has really came close. And so I think- Talk about what those standards look like. <laughs> Let's describe uh, that. Okay, okay. Um, well, see, I'm big on personality and the mental and things like that. Uh, of course, the physical ad aspect is one thing, but I'm not really big on that. And so I will, I'll get to my standards in a second, but I will meet a beautiful girl, but they may not meet my other standards, the uh, ambition stand. So mm. standards, I, you have to be very, I, I love ambition women and I love women of strength. Like mm. I love women that represent my family, like yourself or whatever, you know, it, it's just, I, I, that's just my thing. I'm not looking for my aunties and my mother, my mother, but no, I'm looking for strength. I'm looking for ambition. I'm looking for integrity, women of uh, uh, lots of character and things like that. And, and, and so I just happen to attract all kind of women, but when I meet a lot of the beautiful women, they just don't, the intellect side usually don't be there. And then sometimes when I meet, uh, I meet all types of women, it's, just, it's always some type of offset. And I'm not looking for perfect, right. but at least meet half of my standards or something like that, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. What about you, Landis? Well, um... <laughs> See, when you say traditional, I'm like, traditional for whom and for what time frame? And well, when I say so, traditional. I'm like, because traditionally for African Americans, technically, I mean, you know, that's kind of rare anyway, any kind of autonomy as a woman. You know, um, we're seen as more of trophies or prize or objects a lot and it may not be as overtly expressed as say 30 to 60 years ago but it's still very much so a true thing that women have to especially black women that we have to endure we're always kind of referred to as things that need to be possessed rather than an autonomous human being who can make a choice of whether or not she wishes to share her time with someone else so, <laughs> I'll talk to you. Yeah. I was, I'm the baby. I was the original baby of the family. Mm -hmm. And when it came to boys, I was, I was, I was totally shut down. As the baby, they didn't want nobody touching me. Right? It, I couldn't go to the bottom, even at 13. 12, I couldn't go to the bottom and what hang out with everyone else. I had to stay home with my grandmother on Friday and Saturday nights, right? Um, I was given from the hood, I was given from, from the, the boy, because I hung out with a lot of boys too. And mm -hmm. they gave me a list of things of what you can't do. You can't give oral sex, you can't give sex, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, it was a whole lot of can't. And so as a young woman, by the time I became 15 years old, 16 years old, my brother and, and sister already left the home. I'm still the baby, right? And so I was left with no instructions on how to really date. I got a lot of what you don't do. You don't do this. I knew reputation was really important. I was very, I didn't talk to none of the brothers in the Queensbridge. I mean, I might've talked to them a little bit, but I, I just did not want my name on the block. You know, I just did not want my name on the block. A lot of times when, when dudes came on the block looking for me, they were deterred by my male friends. So I really had no real education of dating until I got into college, right? High school, nobody was really checking for me. I wasn't very pretty. 
I was chunky. I had jerry curls. You know, I, I, you know, T-shirts and sweatpants and some sneakers was the order of the day. You know, my mother wasn't exactly buying me the Gucci bags. You know, all I really wanted was a big pair of earrings. But as far as dating is concerned, there was few examples in our family to look at. Now, my mother and father separated. I was very young. And my stepfather came into the home and just disrupted the whole family, right? Our whole family. And, and even watching them two, it was dysfunctional, right? But I looked at um, the relationship that your mother and father had, um, Justin, mm -hmm. and your mother and father, Landis, and I kind of got an idea of what it's supposed to be like. Right, I, I kind of got an idea, but I really didn't get a really good education on dating, and I made a lot of mistakes as a young woman. Stupid mistakes. I did stupid shit as a young but, girl because I didn't know. And see, I could totally I understand what you're saying too. It's it's almost like a um, um, product of your environment. You know, if you if you mm -hmm. grow up around, you know. Um, a lot of successful dating them more than likely you, that's kind of giving you the manual you know but I, at the end of the day i feel like you know dating is almost it's a it's an ongoing thing it's it's a, it's about experiences in life you know what i'm saying and it's not a time limit on it you can you can be fresh out of high school or you can be in your 40s or 50s before you find the right one for you man but i'm still waiting for you you'll never know exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you want. Okay. Okay. So another thing that was really traumatizing growing up is that our families, like my mother, Uncle Wow, Frank, um, uh, a lot of us would get together on the weekends. And you know, the children would be in one room and the adults would be in another room and they would be playing records and they would be listening to music. And then the next thing you know, somebody's getting the shit slapped out of them. <laughs> I, I mean, we'd be like, okay, it's showtime now. It's showtime. I, you know, I had an Aunt Thelma, and her husband was very abusive. You know, every time, I mean, every weekend that we would go to someone's house, somebody was getting the shit slapped out of them. And so, it to us as kids, it was like entertainment. But we knew something was wrong with that. Right. And one thing I understood is I ain't gonna have nobody hitting on me. So, uh, I totally, totally understand. It, it is not a, it's nothing cool about hitting a woman. Uh, I, so here's a, here's the thing, right? To you guys, it was entertainment. My generation, I kind of, um, I kind of knew that it was a problem with that. You know, it was a problem. I, I knew it was a problem. I knew it wasn't right. So that was kind of taught to me at an early age. But um, once again, like I feel like you're a product of your environment. So if you're younger and you're saying those things, and you think it's entertainment, then in your mind, there's a trigger that, okay, it's probably the right thing to do. If my woman mm -hmm. get out of line, I got to discipline her. The same way, I got to discipline the children. But I, I mean, I always thought it was something wrong with it. I still to this day think something is wrong with that. So, yeah, as children, it seemed like because, the, and I say entertainment, I mean, we would run out the room because all the kids was stationed in one room and we had to conversate with each other. But we would run out to see what happened. You know, we knew it was a sense of urgency when we start hearing a commotion and we hear somebody hit the wall, or hit the floor. We knew we need to see what was going on. And so it, it was, it was semi-traumatizing to even watch my mother jump on my father. 
you know, she would just bug out over anything, every little thing. You would see them and, and she's jumping on them or locking them out the house. It was always something. But I, I never saw like a, a, a I've never had long term of seeing a loving and caring relationship in the long term. Now we have grandparents that were together until they died. Right? It does exist. It does exist, but I don't I never got a chance to see enough of it to really have a good idea of what I was doing when it was time for me to date. So I want to ask you guys a question. What do you think about the concept of needing a mate versus wanting a mate? Go first, Landis. Ah, this was Devon's question. Oh, let's go. Oh no, he can't. He, his audio is still not on. Oh, you mean it's his question? Like he wrote down the question. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess I can go first. Um, so there is a difference between needing and wanting. I believe that both. Are the audio is not connecting. Both of those are actually valid things to happen and to feel. Um, I believe that everybody needs and wants a mate okay. in different ways um, because right, everybody so. needs different things. Um, so as far as wanting a mate, of course, you know, you may want a partner, partners, you may want someone to that the want part is more of um conscious companionship wow. that's really more of what the want is the need is the unconscious companionship that you get from having a partner it's not just of course you know a partner of course if you wish to procreate and all those things yes but unconsciously there are things that we need from other people that we don't necessarily know that we need so for instance you know, you have that friend that you call when you're kind of having a bad day because that person uplifts you. Or you have that person that can bring you down when you're in an anxiety attack. Those things you can also find usually, and most people want to find, in a partner. And so I believe we need partners for different reasons. It just depends on who you are. But we also want them for different reasons as well. Now, the difference that most, I would say the difference between our generations is that for aunties and our grandmothers and grandparents' generations, they focus more on the need and why they would need a partner. And our generation, unfortunately, focuses more on the want and disregards the need of, you know, it, they both kind of bring you balance, both wanting and needing somebody else and understanding and knowing that we as people, not to say that we can't survive on our own, but we thrive with other people. Mm -hmm. We thrive when we have that support system and not just friendship, but a companion, somebody that offers you both the, you get both the, as one would say, the lover and the friend, you get both the support system, cheerleader when you need it. And then you get that person that can sit down and tell you, Hey, you've been, you know, slacking lately. You've been off board. You've been off grid. Like we need you to come back. You know what I mean? But that person can still hold that same space of being the companion romantically and then being the companion that you need um, as a friend. But, you know, of course, there's always the spiritual needs to, you know, you have to make sure that there's balance in that regard. But generally, <laughs> I think it's required. You kind of have to have whoever, whomever you choose your partner or partners to be, they need to be someone that you both want and they also fulfill a need. I won't say you need that person because different people can fulfill different needs, but they also fulfill an inherent need of what a partner for you should fulfill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preach, cousin. Preach. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good family discussion. One of the things that I know is words, and words are powerful. A lot of people don't understand how or how powerful every time you say something 
how it affects your outcomes. So consider the word want. When somebody says, oh, I'm gonna, I should, I might, I'm not sure. When somebody says they want, opposed to saying I need to get or I have, it's a different, there's a difference in the outcome. When you want something and that's what you're putting out, your energy is that you want something, you'll always be wanting something. But when you say you need something, it has a stronger uh, incantation to it. It, in, it invokes a different outcome than one. So I grew up in the era of, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. I don't need a man for nothing. I got my own this, my own that, my own this, my own that. That's the era I grew up in. That was the mindset, right? And as I became older, I would have conversations with other women and I would be like, fuck that, I need my man. Are you crazy? I don't want to do this fuck. What you mean you don't need a man? You don't, what, what, you need somebody? Because as an adult, there are things that we really do need. According to Maslow's you know, social theory, you need love. You need to have someone touch you. Like you, babies yeah. need to be touched in order to thrive. So that's the era I grew up in. And I kind of fell into it in my younger years. Oh, I don't need, I can get it on my own. I don't need you, it. You know, that's a huge difference between I wouldn't say between generations, but that's a huge thing. I'll say at least in the black community is we, val we, we focus people's value on material things, on things that we can, tangible things that we can touch and grab and see. And so unfortunate, it's very unfortunate, but they do, we do. We, 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 we estimate people's value in our life based on what they can physically, tangibly provide. But a lot of times, which is why a lot of those women would say, I don't need him for this. I don't need a man for this. I got my own house. Yeah. But outside of those tangible things, you do need other people. But the problem is, especially as Black people, we're conditioned to believe that we are soulless, that we don't need to nurture our hearts and our souls, and that we are savages, and that we are rough, and that we're angry and we're abrasive and so we're taught and conditioned to be hard versus soft and loving and understanding and nurturing that side of ourselves that needs love and affection and so that's the part that we forget that we need which is why we don't need a man or which is why men say i don't need a woman i don't need no bitch my homies over everything because they're they're we're conditioned to believe and to forget that we have other needs outside of what people can physically provide us and that's including sex now, I'll tell you historically, a lot of women didn't have a choice that but too. to do it on their own. That the too. fact that historically a lot of our men are not in the household, starting from the civil rights movement, before mm -hmm. that, the men that. were in the home. No, not always. Yeah, a lot of times. The men well, I mean, how far back, how far back are we talking? Because we're talking Let's about slavery, they like, snatched all them, they snatched all them men out of the home. Uh, let's talk about quarter, like let's go like as far as our grandmother's generation, not your grandmother, like your great grandma. Your grandma, okay, right? Uh -huh. Like ma, like that generation, they stayed together no matter what. Like there was yeah. no such thing as divorce. It might not be a good marriage, but we 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 got these. But kids. you know why that was that way, though, we, we got right? These kids and we got they got to be fed. But you know why that was also that way, right? Yeah because their generation grew up where their, where their fathers were snatched out of the home. So they kind of kept, they, the reason why they stayed together was more so out of desperation of recreating something that they grew up in. Because we all know back in, in Ma's mother's and grandmother's time frame, they were A slaves. Time. They were slaves. And what did they do? They snatched those black men out. There are no black men. Right. They snatched them and they out here breeding. That's what they're doing. So they did. They were taking them out of the home. So when Mug got older, 
that generation was desperate to hold on, which is a, a beautiful thing, but desperate to hold on to that unit. I can relate to that. No matter what, that's yeah. part of, that's something that I think our generation and our generations kind of forget that they had, they stayed together because they had to, because they grew up seeing people, their husbands and their dads being snatched away from them. So they clung to that no matter what. Unfortunately, people use that as an excuse to say, oh, well, you should stick around regardless, no matter how your husband or your wife treats you, you should stick around. And that's not. And I must say, there was a lot of alcoholism in these generations. There was a lot of domestic violence in these these generations, Um, a lot. I, I would agree with both of you guys, and I, I, I truly agree with both aspects. But I, I think with different generations or uh, different race, whatever you want to call it, it's uh, access. Access to different things that may make dating or may make um, certain situations difficult. You know, you say alcohol, you know, when alcohol was introduced, when crack was introduced, when, yeah. I mean, honestly- a lot of our people down. But honestly, now, you know, you have social media. It can make dating very difficult, especially for a male. You, you may be in a great situation and then, you know, uh, it's just so much different access now to a lot of different things around the world. Back then, it's slavery. Like, each decade has their own thing. But before cell phones and things, things were more close-knit. Now, it's a whole lot of access to a lot of different things right now, right. which makes it, it makes it makes it more difficult that way, too, as well. No excuse, but it's just it's the truth. You know what I mean? It does, yeah. Our generations in social media definitely presents a huge. It presents a different set of issues that we have to learn how to deal with that we were never even introduced to because it didn't exist. And so I definitely understand you, Antoine, because you know people can you make down. anything look whatever the, however they want it to look online. You can make anything look however you want it to look. You know, I tried sure. online dating. I had, I have tried online dating when I first got here in Atlanta. Did you? And I like the idea of picking who I want. I, I certainly like. Uh, I'm gonna look at you. I'm gonna look you over because for me, the first thing is attraction. Yeah. You could be the okay. nicest motherfucker in the world with money, but if I'm not attracted to you, I won't let you touch me. I won't let you kiss me. I won't let you get near me, <laughs> right? So the idea of picking, you know, people and, and then talking to them over the phone was interesting to me. Um, and dating apps have been out since I was in my 20s. You know, I, I, I just know that back in my 20s and back then, it was just a little bit more dangerous. It just wasn't trusted to meet someone at some public place, hoping that you can become friends. But online dating is just like, it's just like randomly meeting someone on the street or being introduced to someone from a friend. Nope, no it's not. It's still a risk. It's different, it's very different. It's different, because walking down the street, and just running into somebody and swiping left and right, you're making a choice with who you interact with. And if they choose to interact with you, then you'll match, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So right. Just walking down the street and happenstance, you see somebody, that's a little different. And then also it's different because usually if you meet somebody in person, you're more likely to, not to say all the time, but you're more likely to kind of get a better sense of who that person really is versus the person and persona that they give you and show you online. That's not always true. True, but you eventually got to meet them and talk to them. So it's just yeah. taking the same reps. Oh yeah, it's always that. to know someone. Well, it's, uh, well I'm, I'm like, now here's, here's where I'm traditional. I don't, I don't prefer online dating because you, all sales, you can sell me anything. And then when, you know, when it's time to meet in person, even the conversation is different because when I meet somebody for the first time face to face, I can converse with them right there. I can see, I can look into their eyes right then and there. I already know what's up. Right. Um, you know, versus versus you're typing me and I don't know who the hell really typing me. You're typing me and you 
and you're, you're, you're even expressing yourself different at this point. You're expressing right. yourself a whole nother way um, than we are face to face. Now you're scared because now we face to face. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? You're not even giving me eye contact. <laughs> but you know what that's because a lot of people again they put on a persona online versus allowing themselves to be themselves so i i agree with you cousin i'm with you i personally do prefer i do course, it. i gotta agree i would say i would say i would prefer to meet I like somebody nice I like the nice again. Like, it's kind of hard to meet people when you work as much as some of us do, and we have, you know, if you don't always, especially right now in this pandemic, it's definitely easier to begin to meet, you know, the dating process. But of course, you know, I'm like I said, I'm with you. I feel like so long of this texting. Okay, so when we're meeting in, in person, so I can see if I want to continue talking to you because this is not right. Work. And my uh, thing was, I did it because I didn't know anyone here. Exactly. You know? yeah. I didn't know anyone here. I didn't know where to go. I didn't have any social outlets um, where I could meet people. I know mm -hmm. I was, I was last year, I was going places, finding places to go, and I would go places, but I wasn't necessarily um, in, in, in positions where I was in, like, I don't frequently go to the club. Hey, by, and I didn't even know which ones to go to. By all means, though, dear, I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with it. It's all about preference. Though. I just prefer, you know, certain things. And I do get it. You know, you're in a whole nother environment and everything. So I do get it. But it's just all about Not preference. I think it really worked. Like, I met some real assholes online. I met one nice guy online, and him and I are still friends today. But I, I, don't, I don't be on that app or go on it, or I might check it every now and then and see who's checking me, but... Can I ask you a question? Yes. It's taking a step back, though. You said that uh, um, you went, you recently went out with a guy, and he was, um, you know, it was kind of disrespectful, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, in the blood and everything, or whatever. Yeah. Where did, where did you meet this guy, and I how did that... I met him online. I did. I met him online. online. I, I dated him for about two, three months. We were getting to know each other. And then I decided I didn't like him anymore. So I ended the relationship. And then last night, you know, recently, um, I was just, you know, it was like, what you doing? All right, you want to go hang out? All right, let's go hang out. You know, and, but I didn't expect him to take me to a place that I didn't belong in. You know, it, it, it's, it goes a long way with meeting a guy and he's making eye contact with you and you get to fill him out in person. And it also goes a long way with when a guy calls you and say, hey, what are you doing tonight? Um, you know, things like that. Yes. You know, and, and by all means, I don't see nothing wrong with a woman. I'm just saying it goes further when that guy makes that phone call it does, it does. Um, oh yeah so it, it shows that initiative that he's serious and that he has a plan a motive that he's willing to act on in our generation i can't speak too much for the older generation i haven't dated too many older men but in our generation it's so rare and annoying <laughs> it's so rare to find a man that'll say hey like i literally just went through this like a couple days ago and i'm like why would you go through all of this asking me when I'm free? What do I do? You know, when I'm, what, what do I like to do? All this other stuff to tell me, okay, well, hit me up when you want to go out. Why don't you just tell me when you want to go out? You know when I'm free. You know what I like to do. Clearly, I'm interested in you because you have my phone number. So take that initiative and plan something. I say I'm not a picky person. I'm not a picky eater. I like to do everything. I like to go out. I love music, et cetera, et cetera. Take the initiative. And the reason why, at least for women, I would say, women who are kind of sort of like me in the same vein, we don't, we have not much success dating is because men are in a state of entitlement and they feel like they are the prize or the only prize in the relationship and they want to be chased and they think, oh, well, bitches be calling my line all day. So I'm just supposed to bend over backwards for you. And that's not how that works. If you want my attention, you show me, you prove that. And I'll do the same. It's reciprocated energy, but unfortunately a lot of men our age is uh, and women too, because I actually hear a lot that women are very 
our generation is just strange. They have, we, as Drake said, you know, we say we want to be in love. We say we want to be together, but we're not really together with nobody. And it's like, well, what's the, what, what are we doing? You know what I mean? It's like, take the initiative and do what you say, do what you say you want to do. You want to date and date. You want to get to know people and do that. Stop sitting there telling people like, hey, I think you're interesting. Now chase me. Like, well, what? have you ever heard the expression? Breach, cousin. Women. I've had, I told you I have some really, I have all the dating stories. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Have you ever heard the expression that women need to be wanted and men need to be loved? I've heard that. I would say need to be needed. I wouldn't say love, but I've heard that and I understand it. Women want to feel like men want are interested in us. We want to be chased. That is initially how. Well, I would say I would say women in the event of what you're saying. I would say women want to feel desired and wanted, and men want to feel needed as if they have a purpose because they want to feel like, hey, me being here makes a difference. That men are a lot more tangible and concrete and hands on, so they want to feel like you need me here because that in turn. It shouldn't give them value, but it should add to the value that they already have for themselves. Because that's how men are bred in this country, is to be of some kind of physical value. And women, unfortunately, we're, we're bred in this country to be objects of desire. So we, in turn, want to be wanted. We want to know that this, that person, this man or that woman wants me, wants me. I know that I'm valuable, period. That's fine, but I don't want to know that you want me in your life. And again, it has a lot to do with how we're bred in this country and not everybody's the same and it's not always to the same degree, but generally I can see that. Hey, I got a question for Devon. Can Devon hear us still? Nah, he left. He gave up. What? Got a, he got he can't question. call in. <laughs> I have a question you can't call him and put him on speakerphone. Okay, okay. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I got a question for him since he want to ask us questions. I got one for him. Uh. Okay, um, let me see if I can get him to dial in. Let me figure out. You can't even up. Just call, just call his phone. He can be on speakerphone. do not matter. But can you, would you be able to hear him from my speakerphone? Let's try. Yeah. Let's... I heard your phone in the background ringing earlier. Okay. Call the man. Call the man. But I believe the they can be able. Okay. I believe he should be able to um, call in. Hey. Hey, do you want to... Um, uh, you got a question? I thought that you can call in. I know that. You know what? They want to talk to you. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Okay. Okay? Yeah, we can hear him. At least you I can, can hear him. How y'all doing? You good. doing good? Forgive me for my uh, lack of uh, internet skills. <laughs> it's all right. So we yeah, were just. You, know. you can still come back on video if you want. I don't know if he can do both since he's on his phone. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But he can still ask, he can still answer these questions real quick. Right. Okay. So we were just talking about, we were at the point where we were talking about the attitudes in dating, the attitudes of, we were actually discussing the difference between I need a partner versus I want a partner. And it should be different than both. Um, Attitudes, people get attitudes for, you know, shit for whatever reason. I mean, when I say that, I'm talking about from childhood, from teenage years, young adult years, somebody thinks they're going to be with that person forever. And then when they don't, all women ain't shit, all men ain't shit. And instead of them trying to fix the wounds, they move to somebody who they think is going to make a better situation for them, and then they don't. And then they blame everybody else for uh, what's not taking place. And you see this shit every single day, man 
of your people. If you see a man taking care of another man's children, you see a woman taking care of another woman's children. And then that person has the nerve to be greasy verbally or disrespectful, thinking that, oh, he ain't shit or she ain't shit, you know. But they're not paying the respect to that person being responsible for their child or children. And then usually that man or woman has made a decision to let somebody go or made a choice to um, choose that person over somebody that they really purely could have had a really better relationship with. And you see it so much that it's become bitter that we've become numb to it. And that's the fuck that part. Because the fuck that part is you got so many great women out here and so many great men out here that women and men pass up that great man or that great woman because we always think that we need the drama, the headache, the chaos, the bullshit. Or that there's something better. I said, or that there's something better. We also have a, that, that we also have, for some reason, we always feel like there's someone better, someone better, someone greater, something more, somebody that's prettier, somebody that's more in tune with us, rather than appreciating and acknowledge and not acknowledging the great person that we have in our lives at the time. A lot of times, the reason why people don't settle down too is because you always, you're, we're always looking for the next looking for next, looking for more, looking for greater, instead of appreciating the fulfillment and the fullness that we have in front of us. And so that's another reason why great people get passed up on. Because I tell women this all the time. I tell people this all the time. Uh, one, uh, women step up for money, men step up for sex. Two, um, when a man really, really, really likes a woman, he's really interested, he takes his ass home. When a woman's really interested, she brags on her. And that's a true statement. That's dope. And a that's lady, dope. Uh, nah, I understand. I was just saying that was dope. You know, and a lot of people, because, see, as men, we get our education from the wild ass uncle or the niggas we grew up with that don't have no fucking education. Mm. And we think that that's. You know how we're supposed to learn. And we can't blame nobody other than our fathers behind that shit. And women mm-hmm. give the education from the head salon and their girlfriends who went through some shit who ain't got no man or bitter than a motherfucker because the man she was <laughs> uh, was dealing with somebody else. And then the man who is responsible, the man who is responsible, she's blaming him for not being strong enough. And it's like, what the fuck you mean he ain't strong enough? He, oh, was you too soft? What the fuck does that mean? Because he think because he opens his door for you or he speaks properly or he doesn't treat you like some raggedy ass broad that he's soft because he's not in the streets. Mm-hmm. And instead of respecting him for what he's doing for you and your family, it's always the oh well Why teach them? Why teach them something for another relationship while they're in a relationship? Like, why can't they learn something in this relationship to keep this relationship afloat? Mm-hmm. Because every, everybody's everybody's not everybody's not going to be in a relationship, even though even though we still want even though we still want um, 
even though we still want the uh, hold on. even though even though we still want uh, that person in our life, sometimes we know that that person is not for us, and sometimes we try to hold on to it. And and the reality is, we have to let that that person go to find somebody that's actually going to make them happy or make yourself happy. I mean, it's a trial and error, no matter what we're going through and what we're doing. But if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, you teach them so they can go to the next relationship with a better agreement in that person's relationship, because you might be building them for that for that person to to find a soulmate or find a twin flame or they love one or whatever person wants to call it, instead of Oh man, fuck that bitch. Oh man, fuck that nigga. And see, we get into our feelings because we think we're not supposed to do that. Because man, why would I? Why would I put her in place so she could take care of another dude? Well, shit, she put you in place to be a better man for another woman. So you can't be mad at it when somebody doing real shit for you. Let me ask y'all a question. At one point, like when you when you're dating and you meet someone and you like them, when is, is there a timeline when you should have sex with them? No. Is there? Are we still abiding? Because I grew no. up. No. On, oh no, no! We gotta wait ninety days. We no. gotta wait six months. No, because every relationship is different, and every interaction that you have with different people is different. Every individual is their own person. So my relationship with Tom is different than my relationship with Jerry. You know what I mean? I may be <clears throat> interested in Tom and want to get to know him and take things at whatever pace. You know, you're supposed to allow things to happen organically with each individual that you're interacting with or entertaining. Because again, how I interact with one person is not always the exact same way that I interact with somebody else. We all carry different energies. So one energy with one person we may have this connection that's just super strong and we just kind of get each other on that level and organically we just kind of come to that faster then not to say that this guy over here this girl over here is different but it may take longer for me to get to that point not that i won't but again there's no timeline some people you mean y'all have that kind of bond as long as it's consensual and you're you know long as it's consensual and you're practicing whatever safe practices you need to practice and you go you may do it that same day. You may not. You may wait three months. You may wait a year. That's but that's also what you personally want to do. We are, wherever you are in your life. Some people may be on a path of abstinence, and that's okay. Some people may not be on a path of abstinence, but they may just want to wait until they know for sure that somebody is seriously planning on continuing to stay in their life. And sometimes you just may want to have sex when you want to have sex, and all of that is okay. So for the men, now for the men, if we can say that, but a lot of times, I want to ask you guys, if you meet a woman and she has sex with you the first night you met her or second or third night you met her, would you still respect her? Because I come from a school of thought. If you give it up too quick, they're not going to respect you. That's the school of thought. That I was I was brought up with. For me at this age, yeah, I would respect her. And the reason why I was I'm, I'm speaking for me only. The reason why I respect her is because if I if I'm physically going to be intimate with her or sexually active with her, I'm already feeling her vibe anyway. So I'm not wasting I'm not wasting my energy and time just to get a shot of ass. So if she if we if we physically have sex on the first night. Hey, I'll be back the second night, the third night, the 15th night, and the 100th night, as long as we cool with each other. Because it's not about the pussy. It's not. As much as, um, as much as we want, as much as we want sex, as men, we, we want simple things. We don't really get into the sexual point. That's just a side effect. That's a benefit. And we appreciate it. I mean, the more the barrier. But I'm not going to look at a woman like, you know, she uh, she wants some different shit. She a bluesy or, you know, she giving everybody the ass like that. Nah, that's just the reality of that. She fucking with me like that. I'm fucking with her like that. Because if she if she's gonna take the time to let's just say this, I'm only speaking for me again. I'm gonna have a conversation with you before we get there anyway. I'm already feeling you anyway, so right. I'm not waiting for my time just to be going out with you because you got a big ass and some big titties and a pretty face. That's irrelevant. You can find that shit anyway. So I'm not gonna entertain that just because that's on the table. So if we already at that point. 
you know, when we both feeling each other like that, hey, you know what? Well, let's be like you said. Let's let's be consensual with this, but we both have a, an agreement that uh, we get to know each other instead of just getting a shot of ass or a shot of dick. Because sometimes women just want dick too, and I can't be mad at that. But I'm not the dick. I'm not. I'm not the dick giving guy. Okay. Well, listen. Hold on. Hey, so with me, I, I don't. I wouldn't lose respect for a woman, but it depends on how I get that. Like, if we're both, if that chemistry is there and we flowing, the night went well, and it never been about sex and things happen, I get that. That's kind of like our role. But if it's the first night I met you and you trying to give it up to me, because, it, like I said, it's just about how we. It's about the whole flow of the whole night. If you if you just trying to give me a piece, and and you making it clear, then it's not that I'm gonna lose respect for you, but I know which, I know how I'm gonna operate after this. So it's like I said, it's that chemistry. We lock eyes and we got that eye contact, and we vibing in a certain type of way, and that one thing just leads to another. I'm all for that, but if it don't, if it's just like. The whole night, it's all about. I got. I, I know. I know you getting this tonight, and this, that, and the third. Then I, I may view you a little. I may view it a little different. That don't mean I'm gonna lose respect, but I may view you different. I know you may not be the one. That's all. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Why are men so threatened by women who have a solid grasp on their sexuality and who they are as sexual beings? My thing is, just like y'all men, just in general. Y'all approach a woman on that rah, 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 oh, I'm feeling you, you look good. Why is it such a negative thing when a woman does it? We know that we like sex just as much as y'all do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just want to have sex. Sometimes we like you. Sometimes we're really interested and want more to come from it. But hey, sometimes it just I may see you and it's like, dang, I kind of want to have sex with him right now. But I still appreciate him and acknowledge who he is as a man. But the problem is that y'all in my opinion, I believe that men in society just as a whole, y'all put too much value, too much of women's value on sex. Y'all value a woman's body more than you value m much else about her and how she operates with her body instead of realizing like, hey, I'm an autonomous being. I can do whatever the hell I want with my body with whomever I want because it's mine. And I have that right to. Instead of judging me for that, just like, you, you know, I could judge the men that I know for all of the the escapades that they have, but it's unnecessary. But then again, that's because I'm a little bit more enlightened than people and I don't really spend too much of my time trying to judge folks. But just in general, in the encounters that we have with men and women, I, in my experience, men, y'all love to be chased. Y'all love to be, so when a woman, yeah, and, you know, when y'all, y'all feel, y'all, y'all kind of get an ego boost when a woman kind of gives it up to you, as one would say, gives it up to you. A little faster than normal or a little faster than you expected or whatever instead of realizing like hey she just got what she wants and she's like thank you all right bye you know what i'm saying I'm you, I'm i've like, done i've done in my lifetime i have met men and within 24 hours we were locking lips and all kind of stuff i've also met men and made them wait yeah, because you you but and you either, have every right to choose but, with whoever but you want to be. relationship lasted. Exactly, you know and like not. like the idea that I grew up with was if you give it up too fast, they're not going to respect you or make you their wife. Right. right. That could also be the same. It's also, but that's the thing. It was a false narrative that and we were and fed as women. Because I've done as both, women, and we I've were gotten false, the same. We were fed a false narrative of patriarchy of is. being inferior to men so we have to oh no your value is only determined by how soon you give up sex no my value is worth way more than what's in between my legs and what no, I'm not talking about no I'm saying happened. I understand I'm no I understand what you're saying but what I'm saying is that idea ideology comes from a false sense of superiority from the patriarchal society that we live in Mm -hmm. our our value as women in society is based on the physical things that we can provide to men unfortunately it's unfortunate and it's a lie but that's how everybody in this country operates which is why women have so many laws and structures in place that control what we do with our bodies so let's talk a little bit about social programming right 
Mm -hmm. I would receive a set growing up in the 80s and 90s. I received a set of programming that has been hard to shake off, right? Mm -hmm. um, today, I see, you know, since the social programming, everything is based and sold on sex from commercials, mm -hmm. um, TV shows, everything is. Um, a, a lot of our programming is coming from television, right? Like when my daughter first moved out here to Atlanta, she thought it was going to be like Atlanta Housewives. <laughs> but you know what? You know what that's I'm saying? Because, like she that's thought it was going to be a TRP. You know, it's just uh, going to be bumping every day, like Atlanta turn up all day, every day. And that's from her watching that show love of hip hop, Atlanta housewives, and all of that stuff. <clears throat> I always say that's one of the greatest shows on television because that tell you the kind of woman you don't want in your life. <clears throat> right. And the reality is, for me, like I said, I'm older now, so I, I, I deal with things different. But if a woman is, if she thinks, if she thinks I'm judging her on her on her body, she, she's mistaken. That's why I made the statement about Men don't judge a woman. The fellas, the dudes, the brothers, the guys, the niggas, the uh, homie and them, they judge women. A man doesn't judge a woman because he accepts her for who she is, whether she got one child, no child, four children, working three jobs, whether she gonna put the pussy out there to make ends meet. A man's not judging a woman if he knows she a good woman because he's gonna make sure that she don't have to go through those things anymore. He's gonna make sure she's taken care of in a way of being eternally happy. And but let's okay. take a look at wait, this. Wait, 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 wait. Can I make a statement off that? Because yeah. that's not necessarily true. At least I can say that for me and my experiences. Half the time, women don't even get a chance to prove that they're a good woman because y'all have these false senses of, of an idealistic woman and what she's supposed to bring to you and who she's supposed to be and how she's supposed to behave, supposed to look and what she, how she's supposed to fit into your world. It just is men. And so it's like, well, a lot of times we don't even get a chance to show who we really are as women because y'all come with these pre this preconceived notions of who we are. And then a lot of times, just in my experience, y'all come to us and y'all bring to us bullshit, but y'all expect gold. And it's like, it, a lot of times, the, at least again, my experience, men have a very big issue with reciprocity. Y'all want to be chased. Y'all want people to give you the word before you even open your palm to give them a quarter. And that's not how things are supposed to work. It's, again, it's supposed to be equal 50, at least some kind of reciprocity here. And again, that's my personal experience. And I've experienced right. men and women across the board. Have it. But a lot of times, just speaking, I get it. I get it. Like I said, y'all get so wrapped up in the sex part or y'all get so wrapped up in who she's supposed to look like or who she's supposed how you expect her to be that you can't see and appreciate the good woman that she is. Now I, mean. I want to a man doesn't look at a woman like that. The guys do, the fellas do, the brothers do. A man accepts a woman for who she is. But he ain't see, worried about all that extra shit because he knows she's gonna make him happy. That's why I call a man and woman not the dude and her. That is true. And one of the things I want to bring out in this conversation is knowing the difference between man behavior, woman behavior, and everything else. Because it takes, it took you time and experience to know the difference that you're a man and this is how you want to treat women. But is that something you always did? You've been knowing me for a minute. Yeah. I don't hide who I am. I tell women up front, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. I let anybody, I give everybody off the rip 100%. Hey, if you fuck it up, that's on you. I can't, I can't make you be here. But you can't be mad when I tell you, hey, have a good life. Hey, question, Devon. Are you, are you single? For so my wife? Are, are you single? Yes. All right, you're older now, and my question to you is, why are you single? And if it's a choice of yours or not, I don't know, but just why are you single? 
No, no, I'm actually looking for a, a very uh, loving, responsible woman. But I'm looking for a woman. No, it's not even looking. I need a woman that uh, me and her jail together as one. I don't need just to be cool with her. I don't need just to be fucking her. And I don't need just to be hanging out with her. I need a, a combination of everything. And it's not my reality where, you know, she got to have a big ass and big titties. I mean, hey, we all want something physically attractive. Yet at the same time, we can work, you know, we can work weight off together. Because trust me, you're looking at a big man right now. You're just seeing the upper portion. <laughs> but, the re- but the reality of it is, no, I really need a, gr- I need a great woman. I need, I need a responsible woman who appreciates me. So it's not about, um, that's not me try- not trying to be interested in a woman. Every woman so far that I've been, not saying every, a lot of women that I've come across so far, it just, it, the, the chemistry hasn't been there. And then the ones that may have been attracted to me, I wasn't attracted to them because I knew my heart wasn't in it. So I wouldn't go waste their time. I hope that answers your question. Nah, that definitely answered it. Appreciate that. So if you know any, what state you in? I'm in the A, I'm in Atlanta. Okay, I'm up here in DC. So if you know any fine ass will be down in the A who's trying to give it a brother like they gonna set up my home. <laughs> Shit, you know my auntie up on that homie stuff, but I'm just saying, I'm just I'm a hey, let me let me stop. Let me I stop. mean, he's kind of right. Hey, I'm you just know. saying you know what? Honestly, honestly, and, and this is and honestly, this is also another thing. Uh, uh, some women really um uh, and, and Angie keeps telling me this. It's the lifestyle that I live. I live a very nice lifestyle. It's not a bragging thing, but people think that they have to compete with it. You don't have to compete with anything that I have. You do you. I'm not tripping on filet mignon because I don't eat that shit. I just want <laughs> a pure woman who's giving me 100% love. So it's not about, oh, well, I can't do this for you. Uh, you know, you look, I got everything I want. The only thing I need is pure fucking love. That's what's going to excite me is the small shit, not the dumb shit. Got you. Okay. So let me ask you guys a question. Hypothetically, how many happily married people do you know, couples? Now, the, here's the thing. What is happily married? According to whose standards? Okay. Well, let's, because our topic is dating, and you have to date before you can get to marriage. Right. But right? My- is happy according to whom? To who standards? Well, some people that. go things and they say they claim that they're happy and yet they're not. And we all know people like that. Oh, they claim or they they show that they're they're happy or they're X, Y, and Z. You know, things are going great, but in real in reality, they're really not. So it's like happy according to who standards? The standards that I live by or their standards? Because their standards, nine times out of ten, they're lying about their own standards in the first place. My question is, the point that I'm trying to make is that there's not a lot of couples that have been maintaining from dating going towards marriage. I mean, I personally don't know many. I, I personally don't know many. Ma- I, I, know, ma- I know two. I know two. But I know a lot of people. I thought I knew. I, I I know two, but I thought I knew six. And what I mean by I thought I knew six is because, like 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 Landon just said, like they the perception. Well, I ain't gonna say that, but they they gave me a perception that they were happy. But now that I I'm in there a little bit, they really not really happy like that. And right. then on. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, there was a picture. There was a picture painted to me that it was almost like they were a perfect couple. But when me and the guy go out, when me and the guy go out, he got a whole nother family. And then I see the chick. Like I'm like, hold up, y'all painted a whole nother picture. So I really, mm-hmm. and honestly, maybe one in a possible, one in a possible. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because we're not dating properly we're picking wrong mates that don't work out. Statistically, uh, black folks, we have the highest divorce rates. Statistically, we have the largest and highest single rates. Um, Statistically, we have- According to whose studies? 
If you're talking about well, these white people studies, they about... always falsify information. Okay, we we just want to go on general statistics. Hmm. We do have the highest divorce rates. We have the most single people, and we have the most domestic violence. Statistically. Okay, well let me let me let me ask you: Are we are we in a situation where we're too uh, we're too selfish to bring a hundred percent to the table, which just doesn't allow us to be genuine? Because men will say, I don't want anything in their life. And right. they will say what they want. And then the dude will be on oh, well, she just, she just in it for the money. And it's one of those, hey, man, why don't you just put 100% on the table? And if she's going to give you 100%, then y'all make it work together instead of this, well, uh, I got to see what she can do. I got to see what he can do. And then they exactly. start talking. And then things get into a personal Aspect. Oh, you said you was going to do this. You said you was going to do that. I told you I needed this. Why are you talking to that dude? Who the fuck you on the phone with? Where are you going to? And it's like, hey, we, we ain't had this kind of conversation from the beginning, but we had a conversation about what we was going to do for each other. And I ain't talking about physically. I'm talking about in a uh, eternity wise. So are we talking from the reason why I'm bringing this up? I'm trying to bring to a full circle and unpack how we keep choosing the wrong people and end up being with folks that we don't like. And the reason why because of our dating, our mindset towards dating. Now, a lot of times when we date, we don't. A lot of times when we date, the, what, I, what I've learned over the years, I'm only 31. I know you don't know that, Mr. Divine, but yeah, I'm 31. Just turned 31 on Friday. What I've learned just in observation, listening to my friends, listening to other people, having these kinds of random conversations with strangers even, what I've learned is, I completely agree with you, Divine, a lot of people are not honest. And I don't mean being honest with partners, potential partners, a lot of people are not honest with themselves about, first of all, who they are. Most people don't know who they are. So they don't know, if you don't really know who you are, what kind of person you are, what kind of person you're aspiring and working to be, you don't really know what you need or what you want. You think you know what you want and you think you know what you need, but you don't because you're not really in tune with who you are. So if you can't be honest with yourself and learn who you are, you're not gonna really know who or what you want. So you're gonna always continue to choose a false idea of what you want. And so therefore you're not being honest with that person because they don't even know what you want because you don't know what you want. And a lot of times people don't sit down and they, they don't really sit down and say, what do I really want in a partner outside of, okay, I want to be physically attracted to them. Everybody wants to be physically attracted to their partner. Put that aside. That's not, what do you want? And then also what do you need from your partner? A lot of people aren't real enough and honest with themselves enough to deal with those negative, or not, I wouldn't say negative, to deal with the shadow or darker side of themselves that, they can't, that aren't perfect, that aren't light. So they can't say necessarily, if they're not honest about those things about themselves, they don't, they can't pinpoint what they need. But I don't think a lot of people know. That's the problem. They I don't, don't know that they're not being, know. a lot of people don't realize that they're not being honest. And some people do. Some people know that they're not being honest about what they really want. A guy I was just date, a guy that I just kind of went on a date with, some weeks ago, he wasn't being honest with himself. Like he literally put himself in a situation to get into a relationship with somebody that he verbally said, I don't, I know that I don't want to be in a relationship with this person. Then why are you being in a relationship with her? You're not being honest with yourself. If you know that, that if you know that, then you have to then act in your truth. And therefore anybody that you come into contact with is then going to be exposed to whatever your truth for what you need and want in your life and relationships is. But if you're not honest with yourself first, you cannot and you will not be honest with other people. But you have to do the work to figure out what you really want and need in a partner. And that's the thing. That's the step that most people skip during dating because that has to happen before you start dating because you, then you're not, then you have no purpose to your dating. You don't know why you're dating. You don't, you, then you do different things. Let me ask you this question because I'm, I'm asking why you're speaking about dating. Mm -hmm. What is dating and who needs to determine where you, when you start dating? Because you. I can come into a relationship and immediately start dating. And the reality of it is you may say, well, you know what? I want to hold off a minute. Oh, I might say I want to hold off a minute because 
I've been in situations where it's been used as a crutch. Where, well, you know, I told you I just wanted to take things slow. Well, you wouldn't take things slow when you were receiving things. No, no, no. That's not being honest. That person is not being honest. That's the person that's weaving the words to make it sound a certain way, but they're not being honest at the core of themselves about what they really want and what their goals really are. But so if they're saying one thing and mean something else, then they're not being honest. And they're not doing the work. Now we're talking about the meat and potatoes of that traditional list. It's really what you want. Well, I want to be able to build a business with them. I want this, I want that, and I want this. And all of these things are important to me. But what you find, what i found with some experience is that even when I say this is what I want, I end up getting so much more. Or I end up getting some things that I didn't even think of that existed that I like and I want to continue to get. But that's because you're not asking for everything. My thing is people are complex beings. You may ask for A, B, and C, but a person is not just the three things that you think they are. They're entire complete beings of their own. So you may want certain attributes, but you and you may find those attributes in somebody, but you have to take all of what they are. You can't just take only the things that you like in a person. But that's a lot of times that, that's, that's an issue that people have with dating is because they, a person may exhibit more of certain other qualities that you may not have asked for, which you, you may find a blessing, or they may not exhibit certain other things. But my thing is, people are whole, complete beings of themselves. Right. They have mm-hmm. multiple characteristics. They have multiple parts to themselves. So you have to learn how to accept people as whole beings, not just as the parts of them that you like, or not just as the parts of them that you want. That's valid. We have to be able to deal with our own and other people's character defects. And we have to be able to negotiate. And it's not always a defect. That's another thing. People always think just because it's something that you wouldn't do or want or say like for yourself doesn't mean that that's a defect for that person. Everybody always tries to make, everybody always dates with the lens of who this person is in relation to themselves. And you, you're not supposed to date in, in that vein. That's the problem. We always want to compare our dating partners to ourselves. You're not dating yourself. You're dating that person. So you can't look at that person and have expectations of that person that you would have necessarily, not all, of yourself because you and that person are two different people. Now, generally, but when you want to look at it on a deeper level, you really are looking for yourself. Kind of. That's, why, that's why I said kind of. That's why I said not entirely. That's why I said not entirely. You do want yeah. some, you know, but you also still have to understand you're literally not dating a mirror of yourself. They may have a lot of the same or similar characteristics of what you want or what you're looking for or that may mirror your own, but they also have other things that make them inherently themselves. Right. And the problem, at least I can say with my generation, is we have an issue with accepting ourselves, so we don't know how to accept other people as who they are. And so we expect them, we expect them to be X, Y, and Z when really they're just an entire being that we have to get to know and they may possess those characteristics. But the problem is all we're looking for is those characteristics. We're not looking at them as being a being that has, that has all, all kinds of characteristics that may include what we want or what we're looking for. That's the problem. We only look to date people. Oh, does she have this? Does she have that? But or, or is she this kind of person? Is he that kind of person? But also, they are an entire being. There's so much more to that person than just those five characteristics that you're looking for in a mate. There's so much more to that person. And my thing is, what you're looking for, you may get from that person, but it may not come in the package or the way that you expect that thing to come. That person it may, never does. It, it may, you, may, you may say, I want a nurturing and caring partner. But the way that you expect them to be nurturing and caring may not be the way that they naturally are caring. And, you know, that's but, you, but, you, but you don't realize that if, you all, if you're only dating to say, oh, I want this package to come exactly how I want it to come instead of taking people as they are and realizing that, hey, the things that I want, I actually got from this person. It may not have came packaged the way I thought it would, but I still got what I wanted. We don't really get to that point because, again, we're so blinded by if it is not exactly what we want it to look like, if it doesn't come or act or behave or do exactly what we want and how we want it. Our culture, we cut the, our, our generation, they cut them off. They block them. They cut them off. All that other dumb shit. And it's like that's stupid because we're all human. There's a thing called duality. We're all, we all have life. We all have lives. We all have careers. Like, 
you got to spend time to get to know people. Our generation is definitely part of that instant gratification. So if we don't see exactly what we're looking for right then and there. Okay. Usually. Okay. I can't say okay. for y'all generation because y'all y'all actually have a little bit more patience than we do when it comes right. to it. for us. You know? Yeah, I can agree with that. I've seen that. That's why so, we can't so, hear you. I, oh, hold I, on. I, I see that. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So I'm to the point now where I feel like I need a relationship. I never felt like this. But I feel like it because I feel like I'm at my peak. Like as a man, as a man, I've accomplished a lot. But now I feel like I'm peaked out. I'm at my peak where I feel like I need a better half to take me to my next level. And because I, I feel like I've done enough. I mean, I'm cool. I'm cool by myself, but. I feel like there's so much more that I can offer somebody and that someone can offer me like a better app. We were talking about wants and needs and I feel like I need that. Cause I feel well, like I'm a peak. I'm at my peak right now. So, but do, so Antoine, I have a question for you. Um, maybe not you, but just maybe some guys, you know, you say you feel like you deserve better. When does better become enough? Because a lot of times what I notice with men in our generation, and even women too, our age people, we all, we're always looking for the next best thing. As if, what, you know, we're always look. I, I can't say for older people, but for, young, for us, we're always looking for the next best thing. Oh, this person, oh, there's bound to be somebody prettier. There's bound to be somebody who has a better job. There's bound to be a woman that could do better, for, that can treat me better. Because, you know, we're always looking for more greater instead of appreciating the greatness that we do so have I, in that one person. What I, so what I did is I lowered my standards. I felt like my standards were way too high, to be honest with you. Even though this is what I felt like I deserved, I lowered them because I felt like if, if, if I can just find a woman to meet me halfway, that I can be their better half. The things that they're, the things that I desire and things like that, I can help them be my better half. I can, you know what I mean? Even if, and because I've been looking for the person that had it already. And so now I'm at the point where, look, if they got some of it, then I'll meet them halfway. Yeah. And, and yes, I'm, you're supposed like to. That. You're supposed to because you have to teach people how to love you. Everybody's not going to know how to love you immediately. Hello. No, no, no. But, go ahead, Devon. I said, that's not lowering your standards. That's accepting them for who they are. Yes. Well, well I accept them for who they are, too, but it's almost to the point that, well, I'm going to be honest. Now now that's working for me. I'm going to be honest. It's really working for me now that I kind of, I call it lowering my standards because I really did. I dialed down a lot from what I had. Like, my standards were much higher than what I, what I, what I have right now. And... I see that that's working for me, to be honest with you. It, it, I'm happier than I've ever been talking to someone right now who's not necessarily what I had in mind or what my, my quote unquote, my standard. You know what I mean? Well, I mean you it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like a standard. It sounds like an expectation. Like it sounds like a mold, not, it sounds like a cookie cutter mold and they don't necessarily fit that cookie cutter mold. I think well, I, when I say standards, I'm talking about characteristics, not just, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, if, I, if I'll explain my standards, then maybe you'll understand. Because it wasn't yeah. about, it's not so much about the job or anything. It's more so the ambition. You know, it's not so much about the certain type character. Like like I said, it's not the material things or whatever. I found, I found like, if there's a woman that did not necessarily making the money, or making or don't have her job that she's looking for. As long as she have a type, some type of ambition, then I'm like, I can work with that. But before it wasn't that, I, I, I already wanted a person who was already on their journey. What's, what's the ambition? Suppose she says she doesn't want to work, but she says she's, she's going to take care of you in every aspect. And she don't what have What if her aspiration is to be a housewife, a mom? What if her aspiration is to raise kids and to, to homeschool her kids? What if, it may look different, yeah. Well, here's, here's my thing, right? It has to be a balance. If that's what her aspiration is, then that's that's fine, but I'm not accepting just that. It has to be a woman who's gonna say, well, look, 
What'd you say, Devon? I'm just laughing. <laughs> And only I'm laughing because you can't say you're accepting them for who they are. And she's being honest with you and telling you, hey, look, I'm not getting a job because I don't want to work. I'm going to make sure that you are my job. Raising a family, raising a home. What if that, 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 that's essentially a full time job? Not, I mean, that. that. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'll, so I, I, I say essentially because she doesn't have anybody giving her a paycheck for it. Well, this is what I'm saying. To each his own. But that's she's getting a paycheck for it because if, you, if, if a man is if a man is responsible for his wife or for his woman, then she gets a she gets a uh, monthly or weekly uh, monetary um, uh, like a man or like a man or woman would on their job because that's holding her hostage when you sit here. And she got to ask you for money. This ain't no kid. No, no. That's what we are talking from the very beginning. Hey, how much money do you need? Listen, you to, each his own, to each his own, but I, won't, I don't, I don't want a woman that just, if she wants to be, if she want to be a housewife, this, that, and the third, I get that. But that's not what I want. Like, even if even if I was stuck with it, like, I need a woman that, that still has some type of ambition other than outside of being a housewife. I that's not. I can't grow with that. Me personally, I don't want that. No, no, I, I agree. I agree. Not for everybody. I agree. I, everybody. I, agree. I, I, I would not look. I believe that the person that I'm going to be with, on, that on. we're going to build Go together. Ahead. I want someone yeah. that may not have everything, but when me and him get together, we're going to build an empire. Together. Yeah, that's what I said. When you say he may he may not have everything, um, you are gonna build an empire. Once you get to a certain age, what are you building outside of business? Yeah, because but we wanna deal that. well you're right, but in general, I I would want a partner. I would want someone because Honestly, let's be honest. You need a two income to live the lifestyle that you see in your head. There has to be two incomes coming in. But if me and him get together and we create our own incomes, we can become yeah. financially independent and we can grind together, I'm with that 100%. I will look at a man crazy. If he ever said to me, you know what, baby, I don't want to work anymore. I'm just gonna make you my job. I will tell him to get the fuck out my face. I'll I'll, too. I, 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 I know I can't do that. I don't want that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I want that. I need a man. I I I like ambition. I like men. And I need a I need a woman like that. Even if she wanted to. I like men who are ambitious and who has a vision. See, I'm a person that can get it done. He doesn't have to get out the bed. Well, you know, but you would still want him to be interested in something besides you. I would no, no, feel. No, no, that's not, no, no, that's not saying he wouldn't be interested in other things. What I'm saying, if he has his own money where he's financially stable to say, I don't have to get out the bed anymore, and you are his number one priority, how come you can't be his number one priority and then everything else? Oh, well, that's a different story. I still think it's more. See, here's my thing. I don't. But I I'm would not, want him to have hobbies and things. I don't like. Do. I don't like to make anything about money. That's not what I'm saying. I'm listening. I, I'm all about vision and ambition. I don't care about no money. Even, even if we got, what are we going to do to maintain? And what are we going to do to grow? And what are we like? How are you going to yeah. make me a better philanthropist? What are, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you, if you want to be a housewife, that's cool. But your ass better be at the house trying to figure out the next move still or figure out what you want to do. Like, I can't talk so I don't have a vision. I'm not, I'm not speaking about somebody that's going to do the growth. I'm talking about somebody that's making you their priority and they still have hobbies. They still have other things. You are their priority. They are financially stable. They have everything they need. They have everything they want. You're their, oh. primary, you're their primary, primary priority. What's financially stable? What's financially stable? Say that again. What is financially stable? Six million 
million dollars with you, you don't have to walk out the door. And I ain't talking about assets. I'm talking about six million in cash, liquid cash. Yeah, so, if you don't have six million in liquid cash, that means you can't walk out the door. Yeah, and so that means and you so every single morning at okay. five. So guess what we guess what guess what I need my housewife to be doing, or you're not even that. We need to be figuring out how to make that six million twelve. And and it ain't. It's not. It's not about. Listen. It's not. Listen. It's not about. It's not about the money. It's all about still keeping that ambition and grind mentality. I don't care about this money. This money don't make me happy. This money don't make me happy. Huh? That's not what I'm saying. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me be quiet and listen. Go ahead. If you have the six million dollars, because it, it takes six million dollars to live in a metropolis city where you don't have to get out the bed to go to work, you have that money where you don't have to get out the bed. You can go make sure she's financially stable. You can make sure she's mentally stable. You can make sure she's emotionally stable. You have other things to do. You got other places to go. You're still helping her build her life. She's helping you build your life. Y'all doing this together. What is wrong with the man saying, "Hey"? Oh, well, not a motherfucking thing. Everything is copacetic, and I can still do what I love, and we can build stuff together. Oh, that sounds like a beautiful fucking life. So and we, because money, okay. money will ruin a relationship. A lack of money, it has a different dynamic on a relationship. Now, if you got somebody who got six million dollars in the bank, cash. Yeah. That makes that's a whole different perception on that relationship. I, we can we can travel, we can build businesses and get real estate. But most of all, we could be looking at how we're gonna make a legacy for the generations coming behind us, right? Okay, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What if he said that six million dollars is none of yours? You, we're not building anything off of this six million dollars, ten million dollars, whatever. We're not doing anything of that sort. We're going to build what well, we're going to build together. This $6 million was here before you got here. All right, cool. But now we're going to be partnership in building another $6 million. That's, that's, that's the right. deal. The deal is, is about having partnerships where, because, you know, you could be the thinker and I'm the doer. You know, you can put paper together and I can administer paperwork. You know, like, as long as we're doing things together, I don't care about that. But I know you got that $6 million and our mortgage is going to be fucking paid, as well as the light bill, the cable bill, the gas bill, the car notes, and the car insurance. And we, it, it just has a different feel to it. And I know you ain't going to let, let us have no food in this house when you got $6 million sitting there it might not have my name on it, but I'm a damn sure have some access to it. But see, that's what, that's what, what, that's, that's, what, that's what I mean when I say you don't, you, you're not entitled to any of you don't have access to it. He's still making sure you're fine, but you don't have access to any of his $6 million. How do but you then you know what? I want to make my own money. I've always wanted to make my own money. No, no, I'm not saying don't make your own money. My point to that is, when you have a, when you have a man in your life that says again, I'm financially stable. I do not have to get out the bed to go to a nine to five to make sure you to take care of you. Now you're getting out the bed to go build your life. Hey, fine, I'm supporting you. I'm going to make sure that your laundry is in the cleaner. I'm going to make sure your food is taken care of. I'm going to make sure there's gas in your car. I'm going to make sure all your amenities are taken care of. And but that frees me up to be creative. Process, we are building, we are building a, a six million dollars together. Unless you can exactly, unless woman, I can, I can deal with that. I can deal with that because when you free me up, because when you free me up, when you free me up from needing a nine to five job, that allows me time to be creative to get my own independence going. See, that's a good motherfucking man right there because yeah. you'll be leaving me free. You'll be allowing me to have the freedom and to be creative and to do what I want to do in my heart. But when I have to put bills together and pay them, and I got to work for these other people all damn day, you know what I'm saying? And you sitting on $6 million and, and I'm still struggling to pay for shit. Now, if I don't have to pay for shit, that frees, that, that relieves me of stress. That allows me to say, all right, baby, 
let's go over here. I found this real estate, this office building right here. We can get in here. We can do this. We can do that. And I'll actually work in putting it together. Okay, but, but again, are you, are you working off of his six million or are you building six million? I'm talking about building six million. Because once a motherfucker say to me, this is mine and you don't have no access to it, I'm going to feel some kind of way, first of all. That first, I'm going to feel some kind of fucking way, right? I'm going to feel some kind of way. But if you say to me, Angel, I'm going to pay all your bills, right? And, and that frees me up to, to make $6 million. I want the woman to feel that way for a reason. Because I explain this to any, anybody and everybody. If me and a woman are together, she has her own home, I have my own home, my own property, she has her own property, we come together. What makes me entitled to anything that she has if I'm just coming in? Even, even, if, we, even if we were together for five years, what makes me entitled to her property that she had before I got there? Nothing. So what makes her entitled to my finances before she got there? Nothing. Because I have responsibilities in regards to son, grandson. Why do they, why do they have to be taken away from to, so she can receive a bulk for a majority of that finances instead of saying, hey, you know what? Let's do this together. That's your money. Because if a woman, let me just say, if a woman comes to me and says, hey, you know what, Devon? I want you to sign a prenuptial agreement. Hey, let me get the pen right now. Let me get the pen right now. You know why? Because then you had that before I got there. Just know that I had what I had before you got here. That's what right. that's for. Right. I mean, you but know what? Like, if that's what the agreement is, then that's what the agreement is. I know me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably have an issue with that. Only <laughs> I would I shit, I would have a fucking issue with that. But if you're 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 saying to me, Angel, you know, this is what I have, this is what I have to put on the table. I want everybody to put their cards on the table. Well, baby, this is what I have. This is my vision, and this is what I'm willing to do. You know, are you with me or you not? You have to do that anyway. You have to bring everything to the table from the beginning so you so you both can be uh, compatible and you can both say, hey, you know what, this is on the table, but it's not for you. I bring it to the table because I want you to know where I stand. Because if a woman says to me, hey, you know what, the mind is it's not for you. Hey, you know what, I have a private plane. You can't use it. Okay, that's fine. I should have a private plane ticket. Well, where the fucking thing? I don't have a problem with that. Because that's her before I got it. It's different if both people had six million dollars in the bank, right? But when you pull it, but when you're dating somebody who has nothing of real value. Says, you know what? If she says, look, I got fourteen dollars in my bank account, right? And you don't have access to it, then guess what? Then you don't have access to it. And you don't have access to it. And guess what? It is what it is. If she says, I got fourteen dollars in my bank right now, and it's yours, that changes things. Of course. I look, I got fourteen dollars in the bank. You want to go eat? I could put seven on it. You can put seven on it, and we can we we can make something out of fourteen dollars. I could cook no, up I, some shit. No, I'll put seven on. I need you to spend the whole fourteen. Cause you spend the fourteen, I'm spending forty thousand. Because I'm not gonna let you sit there and be broke. Why would I sit there right. and your last? That's what I'm saying. Like I can't picture anybody who would have that kind of money and dating someone who does it and not share their money with them. I couldn't I'm even date nobody. Sure. I'm talking about when they literally have access to it. Just because I have it doesn't mean you don't have to get out the bed. And the only reason I'm saying it like that because I'm only speaking for me. I've been in a situation where women have gotten comfortable enough to say, oh, well, I ain't trying to work no more. I ain't trying to get out of the bed no more. Hey, Sean, what? Oh, 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 what you doing? They get your ass up. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Like a woman. So when I say this, I, I, if a woman takes the time to say, hey, you know what, this will not take the time. She got that respect for hey, look, you know what, this, this is what I have. You have access to everything that I have. Then, like, look, let's, let's sit down and talk. Because just because you're giving me access to what you have doesn't mean that you get access to fucking $6 million. And like my phone is literally, literally getting cut off. Like, really, I'm on 3%. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I got to hang up because I'm on a speech and I ain't got no charge out here. Hey, De hey Devon, man. It was a pleasure, so we're going to end this conversation. Listen, 
I think we did, we, we, we touched some ground here today, but we still got to thumb this shit out a little bit more. Right, right, Let's right. make a part two of this. Yeah. Let's make a part two of this. Anyway, I thank y'all so much. This is this is our first episode, and it was dynamic. It was powerful. I got I got lucky. My hairs are standing up on my arms because we. Oh, that's fine. Anyway, guys, I love you all. You know, um, before we go. Um, like and subscribe to this channel. Um, all of my social media is in a is in a description bar. And uh, let's see what you have to say. Leave your comments, questions. Y'all be blessed, man. All right, join the Cherry Club. You already know.